How are you doing today, Ross? Oh, there you go. Cool. Arrow, I'm doing well. How are you? Doing fantastic. Oh, I hear a baby in the background. You really do take family very seriously, don't you? I, I certainly do. It's number one. Oh, my God. I love the fact that, that, that you are so open with this because people like to make it their own personal private journey. But no, no, no. Ross likes to, to include the entire process. Yeah, absolutely. Family first, you know. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's the most it's, it's everything we got right at the end of the day you know you can put the guitar away you can stage the lights turn off and all that and the only thing you got left is is family so absolutely creating those moments where you're where you're doing music at home and the little ones are there what is that like for you in this moment of now and the reason why i bring that up is because my daughter is now 44 my oldest grandchild is now 19 it goes by too quickly ross <laughs> Don't remind me. Um, it, uh, you know, it's, it's no different than it ever, ever has been. And that's, you know, I think that's the, the best part, right? Is that it should, those little moments shouldn't change, right? That's, that's the intimate stuff. That's the stuff you keep, uh, you know, at home and you make up goofy songs about losing a remote or, uh, you make up goofy songs about whatever's on your mind, you know, and, uh, that's the fun stuff. And, um, so, you know, you, you do everything you can so that those moments don't change, right? You can get on a bigger stage and you can get in front of bigger crowds and all that stuff, but, uh, the crowd at home, that one shouldn't change. <laughs> Making that move to Oklahoma. I mean, I, I moved into the South in 1985. I, there, there was a culture shock. What was, what was your first initial shock of getting into these Southern states? Um, it was, it was a bit of a culture shock, um, you know, coming from Chicago um, or Evanston down to um, down to Oklahoma. Oklahoma is just a, a little bit more spread out, right? Um, a little more wide open space. The air feels cleaner. Mm-hmm. It was it was a shock, but in a in a in a good way. You know, um, love you. Uh, <laughs> it was. Um, I don't know. You know when you go outside and the air smells like the South? I don't know if that makes sense to anybody but me, but, <laughs> um, you know, the air up, up in Chicago is, is great on Lake Michigan, but, um, and the people, you know, you still get the Midwest nice, um, cause Oklahoma is still technically Midwest and, uh, but it's the Southern Midwest. So it, it was, a, it was a nice transitional state, Southern state, I would say. And they've been nothing but, uh, they've had nothing but love for me. So, so, yeah, it's been great. You talk about the air that we breathe here in the South. You're absolutely right. That's the reason why I take a transition walk every morning through this forest, because the scent of the beautiful air and that sun rising, it really does something to, to cleanse the creative palate. It's something, isn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. It smells different. It, um, you know, and it's not just like the, the city smog, because it's, you know, you can go into a big city in the South and, um, and it just smells different. You still get the gasoline and the, you know, whatever else you get in the city, but, um, but there's something else to it. And I don't, yeah, I don't know what it is. If it's just in your brain or, or if it's the heat, I don't, I don't know what it is, but yeah, it's, it just triggers something in me. Having all that land in Oklahoma, what, what, how do you communicate with that soil? Because I, I am a naturalist like that. I, my, th- these trees have a voice and I listen to them. Do you do the same? Yeah, yeah. Now, now we're we're on the same page here. I think trees are the coolest thing on the planet. I, they've seen so much. Um, it's really easy to connect, you know, with with the land here in Oklahoma. It's um, it's got a lot of Native American, um, you know, a lot of Native American history here in Oklahoma, and um, you know, that's uh, Native Americans felt, um, you know, they were obviously at one with with the land and the trees and the environment and the animals and. Um, <clears throat> And so I tried to, obviously I can't, uh, you know, I can't identify too much, but, um, but I feel that way, right? Yeah. I get what they they were feeling, you know, um, the trees, they've seen everything and the air and the, and the ground and the animals around you, they've got it all figured out. And, you know, we're up here arguing about nonsense and, um, it's just very grounding, you know, to, to be out there in nature and in the trees and all that stuff. So, yeah. 
I like the way you think, man. Well, <laughs> dude, if you sat here in the studio with me, it's full of Native American spirituality tools. That is my walk and way because they're just just not even two miles from here are these rocks that these Native Americans used to live within in in the 1400s. I believe I'm creative because that nation is still talking to me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, my wife um, and my kids are. Um, they're part of the Osage tribe. So um, my wife is a, yes, she's a member of the Osage tribe, and uh, my kids are too by, by, that, by that end. So, um, so it's meaningful to me. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's, a, there's a spirituality to it, you know, tied to, to, to Mother Earth and, and their tribes. And um, that was fascinating. Yeah, I love it. And don't you think that working with Niall is, is a great way to connect? Because he seems to be that type of person also that you, that realizes the, the, the continuation of the universal energies. Yeah, absolutely. He's, um, you know, he's a really cool guy. Um, he's one of those people that you immediately gravitate towards um, because he's really good at, like, um, at matching your energy right when you walk into a room, right? So, like, he's he's really good at at mirroring your energy, using your lingo, right? Adapting really fast to a new environment, um, and I'm sure there's something to be said there, right? For that for that spirit, that energy that that we're talking about. Um, there's probably something to that, but um, he's just such a wonderful human um, that you know, yeah, he's he's definitely in that same boat. Wow, where can people go to find out more about you, Ross? Because they need to really learn about who you are as a creative spirit. Um, there's not a lot out about me right now, but rest assured there is um, there is some coming. I am working on some, some new music in the background and working on a bunch of stuff, uh, little projects here and there. Um, right now, uh, social media is all I got. So you can just search, you know, Ross Clayton on Instagram and Facebook and um, got got a couple TikToks out there. Although, gosh, I'm struggling. That's a tough one. Um, <laughs> I, can't, I can't, dude. I can't keep up with these kids. No. Um, and uh, but yeah, social media is the best place to find anything about me right now. Uh, I'm redesigning the website and all of my all of my PR stuff. So, um, so yeah. Excellent. Well, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, Mr. Ross. I'll be there. You just let me know when. Excellent. You be brilliant today, okay? Thank you. Have a great day.